Welcome to our recorded information session about the professional LLM in financial law. My name is Megan Thomas, and I'm the Graduate Program Director here at Osgood Professional Development. I'm going to take you through the first couple of topics in today's session, a program overview and the degree requirements. We'll then be moving on to look at what to expect as a student at Osgood PD, the program structure and tuition fee, how to apply to the program, and of course, some information about how to get into contact with us if you have more questions after watching today's program. The professional LLM in financial law moves beyond just specializing in areas like banking or bankruptcy and gives you the opportunity to explore multiple areas in the financial sector, such as capital markets law, financial derivatives, risk management, compliance, and also looks at some of the developing areas in things like fintech and privacy. So you'll come out having had exposure to a wide variety of topics on the law in the financial services sector. In terms of the degree requirements, there are nine credits of required courses in this program, and these are offered at the beginning of the cycle in the program. So those are Introduction to Financial Law, Advanced Banking Law, and advanced bankruptcy and insolvency law. Those are going to give you a good foundation for the courses that come later. You'll then see a variety of elective courses that will be offered throughout the program. And some of the popular courses include insurance regulation, banking documentation, enterprise risk management, regulation of financial institutions, and behavioral economics. If you'd like to step outside the financial law area and take an outside elective, you'll have up to six credits in order to be able to do that. In order to complete a professional LLM degree, you'll be doing 36 credits worth of coursework over a two-year period. Typically, you'll be taking one or two courses per term. If you're taking two courses in a term, they will usually be one after the other rather than running at the same time, and this makes it a little bit more manageable for our part-time students. There's a research requirement to complete within the professional LLM, and what this means is we're looking for you to do a minimum of one paper that's at least 8,000 words, which is about 30 pages in length. You can do this paper, which is called a significant research paper, within a course in your program, or you can do it independently under the supervision of an instructor. Another option is to do a major research paper, uh, which is a longer paper of about 18,000 words or 70 pages. Which of these options you choose is completely up to you, and you can choose once you're in the program. We also offer support to help you decide which route you'd like to take if you need that. The program takes typically two years to complete, or six terms. We run all year round here at Osgood PD, so you would find that we offer courses in the fall, winter, and summer terms. If you complete the program continuously, you would complete it within two calendar years, but there are lots of options that we'll talk about as the session unfolds to take breaks in the program. And so if you need longer to complete the program, that is something we can easily facilitate. At this point in the session, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Christine Briggs, to take you through the rest of the material. This is a part-time program designed for working professionals, and one of the principles of that design is minimizing the amount of time that you'll be away from work. To that end, we typically design courses as either evening or intensives. Evening classes typically run from 6 to 9 or 7 to 10 p.m. and have weekly meetings over 6 or 12 weeks. Intensive courses are scheduled in a condensed format. We commonly schedule three credit intensives over three days, Thursday evening, followed by a Friday and Saturday full day session. While six credit intensives are less common, you may see a six credit intensive course scheduled over one full week or as two part intensives, two Thursday evening, Friday, Saturday sessions. The program can be completed entirely through distance learning, which means that all required courses and most elective courses have an online or hybrid format. Online only courses take place over Zoom there's no option for in-person attendance. 
Keep in mind that this is not a self-study program and courses are not asynchronous. Courses in the program are interactive seminars and live attendance is required because participation is an important aspect of the program, regardless of course format. Hybrid courses offer students the option to attend either online or in person. Hybrid courses typically run out of our one Dundas campus. However, you will occasionally see courses that run out of the Kiel campus. The other format is in-person only. This program doesn't typically have courses that are scheduled as an in-person only format. However, you, you may see electives drawn from other LLM specializations in an in-person only format. But keep in mind, you'll always have enough online or hybrid options to do the program entirely online. No matter the schedule or format of your course, you can expect to receive materials about four weeks in advance of your course's start date. Every course has a course website on our learning management system, eClass. Your course's eClass page will contain the course syllabus and information about required readings, assignments, and due dates for the course. Some courses have required textbooks, which you'll need to purchase, but many courses have all readings available on the eClass page. Prospective students often ask about how much time they should budget outside of class to prepare and complete assignments. Part of the reason why we release course materials four weeks in advance is so you have some time to review the course's requirements and schedule out your time. That said, the amount of time you'll need is going to depend on the course material, the course format, your reading or study style, pace, and your background. But in general, you should expect to spend as much time outside of class as you're spending inside of class. Typically, students budget one to three hours for every in-class hour. You should assume that you'll need some more time during your first term, particularly if you haven't studied law before, as there's a learning curve in figuring out how to do the readings effectively. There are no invigilated exams in this program. You can expect a variety of methods of evaluation during the program, including individual or group presentations, short assignments, and participation grades. All courses have a major assessment, an assessment that's worth 51% or more of the course grade. Major assessments are typically research papers or take-home examinations. Research papers vary in length, typically 10 to 15 pages, from course to course based on factors such as the number of evaluation methods contained in a course and the weighting assigned to the research paper. Research papers should either be on a topic explored in the course with a more in-depth analysis or on a topic that is a natural extension of the course material. Generally, research papers are due about a month after the final course date. Take-home examinations are open book exams, which typically include a set of questions where students are given a specified amount of time outside of the classroom setting, typically two to four weeks, to complete. These questions can take a variety of formats, but typically take-home exams will include fact pattern type questions, as well as analytical and essay style questions. As a York University student, you will have access to the Writing Center, student accessibility services, and other academic resources. In addition, we take an individualized approach to academic support. Students have access to academic counseling to get advice on achieving academic access, and helping to troubleshoot any difficulties you may be having. Individual support goes beyond the academic as well. Students have access to confidential mental health and wellness counseling, and we offer one-on-one -on -one career support, including resume review, mock interviews, career and job search coaching. This is a two-year part-time program, and we operate on a three-term system. The fall term runs from September to December, the winter term runs from January to April. The summer term runs from May to August. In the summer term, most courses end in June rather than running through to August. Because the summer term is a bit condensed, you'll sometimes see summer courses that begin in April. You'll register for courses on a term-by-term -term basis with the help of your program assistant. Program assistants are dedicated members of Osgood PD's team who will assist you with program and administrative issues from the time of your orientation to the time of your convocation. Your program assistants are your go-to for all questions during the program. Registering in a term will trigger fees to be posted to your student account. 
Your tuition for the program is charged in six installments over the six terms of the program. If you finish your degree in fewer than six terms, your remaining installments will be billed at convocation. If you need more than six active terms to complete your degree, additional terms are charged at a lower rate. An active term is any term where you are taking courses or are making academic progress. And an inactive term, or leave of absence term, is one where you are not taking courses and not making academic progress. Given the nature of part-time professional students, it's very common for a student to take a leave of absence during their studies. You can take a maximum of two back-to-back -back leaves of absence, and if you need a longer lead, your program assistant can advise you on options. Please note that we've omitted tuition rates from this recording to keep it current, but for up-to-date tuition information, please visit our website. Our program is OSAP eligible, and students in the program with financial need can also apply for bursary assistance. So this is a cohort program, which means all students begin the program as a group, and a new cohort doesn't start until the first one finishes. New cohorts for the program begin every two years in even year falls, so fall 2024, fall 2026, fall 2028, etc. Applications open on October 1st, the year before the program begins, and there's a final deadline of May 1st. We use an online application portal. After creating your username and password, you'll be able to enter the portal to complete your application. You don't have to complete your application in one sitting. You can always save and return to it up until the application deadline. The application will ask you to answer some questions about your interests in the program, your background, and to provide some documents. The committee reviews applications holistically, taking into consideration the experience that you bring to the program. The application questions help the committee to contextualize your experience and interest in the program. It's a tool to help them understand your motivations for applying for the program. You'll also need to submit your CV or resume. This gives the committee an understanding of your professional experience and how that experience relates to the program you've applied for. We're used to reviewing CVs from all different jurisdictions and industries, so there's no required format. However, we do ask that your CV include job titles and dates of employment, a description of your job duties for each role, and a list of all previous educations with your degree title, institution name, and year of completion. As a professional program, we do put significant weight on relevant professional experience. If you have a JD or LLB, generally, we're looking for a minimum of two years of practice experience. With applicants who do not have a JD or LLB, broadly, we're looking for a minimum of five years of senior level experience in a role where you've gained applied legal knowledge that relates to the area you want to study. Generally, students who don't have a previous law degree do have a graduate degree in their field, and more often than not, they have closer to 10 years of senior experience. Our number one recommendation to students who don't have a JD or LLB who are interested in the LLM program is to reach out to us before you apply with a copy of your CV. We're happy to do a pre-application review and give you some feedback on fit. That way, you can go into the application process with confidence. You'll also be required to submit transcripts. We require transcripts from every university you've attended. Even if you have advanced degrees, a transcript copy could be a photocopy of an official or unofficial transcript, or even a screen print from your university record. If you're admitted to the program, we will require official transcripts and we'll give you more information on that at the time of admission. In general, we're looking for applicants to have an overall B or 75% average or equivalent. However, because we're a professional program, we recognize that many of you completed your degree many years ago and that your academic performance from 10 years ago, for example, may not be a good indicator of your current capabilities. The committee reviews your application in context, so having a lower average won't exclude you from consideration. There is a section on the application where you can provide any additional context about your academic performance if you feel it's relevant to do so. You'll also need to submit a writing sample. 
the committee uses your writing sample to assess your graduate level writing and research skills. Your writing sample could be an academic paper, a memorandum or factum, or a five to 10 page research paper on a subject that you're interested in. We have topic suggestions on our website. While there's lots of flexibility on what your writing sample can be, there are some specific things which your writing sample cannot be. Please do not submit unresearched opinion pieces, co-authored papers, non-analytical summaries of the law, court pleadings, or other legal documents. The committee cannot use these pieces to evaluate your research or writing skills. As part of the application, you'll be asked to submit contact information for two references. Your referees will be sent a reference form to complete over email. Your references can be professional or academic. The best reference is one who can validate your professional experience and speak to your academic potential. And finally, if you haven't completed at least one year of full-time university studies in an institution where the only language of instruction is English, you will be required to provide a language test. You should be prepared to submit a language test at the time of application However, depending on when you'd apply, the committee may consider making a conditional offer of admission, or your application may be deemed incomplete until your language test has been received. Please review our website for detailed information about language test requirements and deadlines. After you've completed your application and paid your application fee, your file will go into queue for review. Our team will do an initial review of your file for completeness and let you know if anything further is required. We'll keep you informed of the status of your application throughout the process. The timing of when you'll receive a decision depends on a number of factors, such as when you applied and when your application became complete. But in general, applications are reviewed on a rolling basis and early offers are made to top candidates but most decisions are made within about a month of the final application deadline. If you have questions, we encourage you to reach out. To get in touch, please fill out our contact form using the URL on your screen, osgoodpd.ca slash LLM info. Using this form ensures that we have all the information we need to fully answer your inquiry and that it reaches the right member of our team. The form also allows you to include a copy of your resume or CV, which we encourage you to do if you have questions around program fit or program selection. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this session. We hope you found it helpful.